Today, I come to discuss a condition that has been neglected and mischaracterized by the medical community and the public in general. This condition called myalgic encephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome and the overlap with a long COVID. I have no conflict of interest. Uh, there is no uh, blood biomarker for this kind of condition. Therefore, the diagnosis has been based on clinical symptoms and um, where the code of the diagnosis is severe fatigue and persistent for longer than six months plus other symptoms. The post recessional malaise or pain is the cardinal symptoms of this illness. Several organizations have been attempt to establish a diagnosis of this kind of conditions. Uh, in 1994, the CDC define the FACURA criteria, and this criteria uh, define the illness as a fatigue that have been excluding other causes that can explain the symptoms. In, in, in 2010, the Canadian consensus criteria, they outlined the post excessive malaise of pain and pain. And in 2015, the IOM established the uh, IOM criteria. In this kind of uh, criteria, they include five symptoms, severe fatigue and persistent for longer than six months, the post excessive malaise and refreshing sleep, and at least one of the two criteria, the cognitive dysfunction or orthostatic intolerance. In a recent paper uh, by the CDC, estimate 1.3% of the adult populations in the United States suffering from MECFS. And this illness increased with age through age 60 to 69 and decline in age over 70. White populations have been more affected than Hispanics and Asian populations. And if family income have been considered as a risk factor of these kind of conditions, uh, where less than 100% of the federal in, uh, property, pro poverty levels have been linked with a high prevalence of this kind of condition and living in rural areas. Other conditions have been associated with this illness that includes the parts of postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, the inappropriate tachycardia or bradycardia, orthostatic hypotension, functional moving disorders, a small fiber neuropathy, IBS-like symptoms, rashes, hives, and other com conditions. There is no uh, physical findings in this patient. However, we see in several of our patients after they develop this illness, presenting rashes like uh, this patient in the knees that have been called liberal reticularis, or this patient in the feet that turn to red, purple kind of color that people call black bullying, or other people present with a hypermobility or EDS, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, that we see in around 20 to 30% in our MSCFS population has this kind of phenotype. In this uh, picture, we see a female who had this kind of condition with a subluxation of the hips. We can see the positions of the feet, or sometimes with sections on the fingers, like I would see in her fingers, or the patient in present with increased elasticity, like in this patient. In some occasions, we can observe the um, a Raynaud's phenomenon, like we see in this, kind of, in this patient. Um, the other things we see is in the post sexual malaise that have different kind of flavors. When the people experience these crutches or pains, they can present with an additional manifestation, like in this patient we saw in the clinic, that she has um, hyperreflexia with a moving disorders. Other patients present with a severe incapacitated fatigue, like you see in this man, unable to ambulate. In other occasions, patient present with a uh, moving disorder, like uh, this patient present with a moving on her neck and uh, with a severe fatigue. Notice like a uh, cheese wearing dark glasses that indicate the patient have a severe uh, photosensitivity. This condition has been reported in, in, the, uh, in the planet in, in some occasions as a cluster of illnesses. 
Uh, for example, in this map we present in 1934 in uh, Los Angeles, in 1948 in Iceland, we call, call, used to be called Iceland disease. In the 50s, there are several outbreaks in UK, 53 in Boston, 56 in uh, Miami, in 1955 in South Africa, and 1940s in Australia. This kind of cluster or presentation of this illness suggests possible environmental factors or as well as an infections could be the cause or associated with this kind of condition. MECF has associated with infections in over 60% of the, of the time. Patients refer like at the initial of the illness start with a viral infection, virus such as EBV, influenza, HSV6, coronavirus that include SARS in 2002, MERS in 2013, and SARS-CoV-2 in 2019, 2020, and other virus as an infection agents have been linked with this kind of condition. I want to share some few cases that we have in our clinic, and we're able to establish what happened in day one. For example, in this patient, a patient came from Wisconsin to Baja California for vacation. She ended up having a uh, fever, uh, sore throat, malaise, muscle ache, joint pain, and she developed this rash. She was diagnosed with acute dengue, uh, confirmed by a cure and convalescent serology, as well as the, the Zika PCR in plasma was positive. This is another patient who was a prayer healthy uh, female college student who developed a uh, primary HSB1 stomatitis, uh, oral uh, esophageal. And uh, in this patient, we can see the tonsil have been involved with x ray. The patient was admitted to the hospital, treated with a sacrament and heavy fluids. After a solution with the herpes simplex, patient uh, continued with symptoms that fit into the MACFS criteria. And this is a, another patient that we have with a typical sustained rash. Uh, and this patient, uh, four weeks later, developed fever, sore throat, enlarged tonsils, uh, cervical endopathy, and the serology was uh, positive for ABB. So you can see the exudates in the tonsils. All these three, three conditions end up in developing uh, MECFS. In covid uh, we uh, have in our long COVID clinic, we look at 105 patients who have been diagnosed with long COVID with symptoms that persist for longer than six months. We evaluate 29 symptoms from fatigue to rash, and we evaluate the frequency of, of the symptoms in those patients and the severity of this condition for light grade, white mild to a black severe. And we see a uh, symptom like a fatigue for seasonal malaise, brain fog, and reflexively lethargy, insomnia, and others were the most common and more frequently associated with severity of the illness. So we apply in this 105 patients the IOM criteria for diagnosis of MECFS, and we find out 43% of this population had an MECFS based on the IOM criteria. Several hypotheses have been <clears throat> proposed to explain this kind of condition that include increased inflammation, immune dysregulation, mitochondrial dysfunction, endothelial dysfunction, dysbiosis, metabolic abnormalities, virus persistent or viral reactivation. Similar hypotheses have been proposed for explain, explain long COVID symptoms. In this study of, of cytokines and MECFS, um, there are 10 females with MECFS. 10 uh, healthy controls, and they draw blood every day for uh, 25 days. They mentioned 51 cytokines and tried to find out what cytokines have been linked with fatigue. They found out leptin correlates with fatigue. Uh, we see here in green leptin, and we see the vari variation or the fluctuation of the leptin levels, some days high, sometimes low, in the same patients. And we see in all the patients have the same kind of a uh, very uh, fluctuations in these values. When they ask the patients about the fatigue severity, and they found a straight correlation between leptin levels and fatigue. This study implied cytokines directly or indirectly are the drivers of MCFS symptoms. 
It's another study of 51 cytokines with a hundred, in 192 patients with MCFS based on the FACURA criteria, 393 controls, and they use the MFI 20 score as a way to quantify the severity of the fatigue, where lower numbers means mild and high numbers means severe. Uh, in this study, I uh, found the TGS beta was elevated in people with MCFS and resistance was lower, and this a changes were statistically significant. IL-13 um, was elevated in severe group compared with the controls. Leptin levels was uh, mild, a, in, lower in patients with a mild disease. And overall, they found out 17 cytokines a increase on those patients, and the levels correlate with the severity of the illness for mild, moderate, and severe uh, symptoms. And 13 of these uh, 17 cytokines were pro-inflammatory cytokines. CX, CL-19, inversely correlate with the fatigue duration. <clears throat> this is another study tried to evaluate the impact of exercise on cytokines. In this study, they had 24 patients with MECFS matched with a 24 sedentary controls. They measured 51 cytokines and follow after the exercise of CPEG. And 10 cytokines with significant difference, eight increase and four decrease. In this kind of graphics, we have into the left, the controls into the right, we have patients with MCFS. The, in the a blue represent low levels, in red, higher levels. A small circle, a mild changes, bigger circle, bigger changes. And we try to connect the dots here, connect the red dots in the controls compared with MCFS, we see a significant difference in the two connectivities. So this kind of profile of cytokines may help us to differentiate a person with um, chronic fatigue compared with a healthy population. Another evaluation of assessments in this patient is the bioenergetic energetic because the people complain about fatigue. So in this study, uh, they uh, measure uh, mitochondrial function based on a technique called uh, seahorse. They have uh, 52 patients with the MECFS, 35 controls, and they use the FACURA criteria as a diagnosis for this kind of illness. And they look at <clears throat> five different um, mitochondrial functions that include basal respiration, ATP production, protein leak, maximal respiration, and reserve capacity. And they are comparing people, healthies, and controls. In the square here uh, frame, we have the fresh samples outside the frozen samples, but it's focused in the fresh samples. Here in the left, we have healthy control into the right, we have patient with an MECFS. And we find out all these five functions, the basal respiration, the ATP production, the protein leak, the maximal respiration, and reserve capacity was compromised in patients with MECFS compared with, that, with controls. Another findings in this population is the microbiome. As you know, microbiome is part of normal flora. The more diversity, the better than we have or healthier microbiome. In people with MCFS, have been shown a decrease in the diversity of bacterial microbiome, uh, increase the allostase and decrease the fecal bacterium. This consider possible a top biomarker for MCFS. They found an increase of the pro-inflammatory species and decreased on anti-inflammatory species. There is another evidence of uh, injury into the gut, evidenced by translocation of, of proteins from the gut into the bloodstream, and they found out uh, the increase of LPS, an increase of LPS binding protein and CD14 as a biomarker or integrity of the gut mucosa. In this uh, figure to the right, Try to summarize <clears throat> what the potential hypothesis of dysbiosis and, and, and chronic fatigue. Possible the infection, SARS CoV or viruses can lead into intestinal dysbiosis, alterations of the whole bacterial population, and changes in the gut integrity, bacterial translocation, they lead into more inflammatory responses with increase of cytokines, cytokines and reactive oxygen species, ROS, and this kind of systemic inflammation lead possible. Uh, brain changes leading into uh, the many CNS manifestations that we see people with MCFS. Uh, in addition, how to evaluate this kind of neuroinflammation? Uh, studies here from uh, Stanford, uh, 
this uh, which have been chaired by Dr. Michelle James and Michael Sinek, then they co use uh, carbon-11 as a marker of protein called TSPO. And TSPO have been considered a uh, biomarker for mitochondrial function as well as macroglia cell activation in other words, in brain inflammation. So the, in the right, we have a healthy control into the left patient with MECFS, and we see the increase of the tracer in patients with a MECFS compared with the healthy controls. <coughs> but this uh, inflammatory chain doesn't uh, limit into the brain. They have scanned the whole body and they see inflammation in other parts of the body, like we see here in the spine and the sacroiliac joints in patients with MECFS compared with a healthy control in the, into the right. The management of this condition is still very controversial. There's no guideline uh, by the CDC or the FDA how to take care of those patients, but something that we standardize in our clinic is pace activity, avoid crutches, uh, have energy conservation activities. Um, it's important to regulate inflammation. Pacing is one of the ways to regu regulate inflammation. We suggest to follow uh, anti-inflammatory diets, such a uh, Mediterranean diet. Um, a consider maybe no approved therapies can be used in this kind of conditions, or we use uh, off-label therapies uh, such as naltraxon, uh, low-dose abilify, and there are some studies with uh, supplements like coq 10 ATS that show some benefit in people with MCFS. But we can see like an early intervention, try to identify the risk factor for this kind of condition. The use of antivirus, vaccination, immunomodulators may have impact in the uh, development of this kind of condition. Thank you.